Another uh, very powerful and useful tool in promotion is this icon here, which is the grid and symmetry painting. And I right click on that to bring up its little dialog, and I can tab between block grid or symmetry. Symmetry, what that will do is allow me to do stuff like this. Let's say I were creating a really fancy rug pattern or something like that. It just very quickly allows me uh, to draw and have it. Uh, create that pattern here, you go in a, what's called cycle mode and a more spiral approach to things. And it's just a really interesting and potentially useful way to do things. But what's even more useful is the tile mode, or the, uh, the grid mode. And uh, so if we just choose grid mode, now you'll see that the mouse actually pops uh, uh, in 8x8 pixel increments. So if this were an 8x8 file set, I can extremely quickly grab what is a very specific tile, and I can start drawing with that tile to test and make sure the tiles work the way I expect. So imagine if this were an entire tile script, it's super easy to very quickly grab the tile and stamp the tile on. Let's say that looks like a building for instance. Um, but let's say there's also a more powerful feature. Let's say you need to create a tile in the first place that loops perfectly in any given direction. Uh, in this case, that's why I loaded up this in the first place. Let's say we need to make sure that the sky in these clouds and these buildings tiles infinitely to the left or the right. Uh, so we know it's uh, 60 pixel wide. Uh, actually, 60 pixel tall. It's 80 pixel long. So we're going to make the width. Uh, the same. We're going to make it 80, and the height we're going to make the full height we're going to make, which is 60. And instead of grid mode, we're going to go into tile painting mode. And the next thing we need to do is make the image um, frame this size, and we're going to make sure we're in position mode. Mm -hmm. And we are going to Again, frame size to start with, but I'm going to bring this width up to uh, three times, that would be 240, I believe. Uh, three times the width, um, and uh, reposition the current part of the image to the top left corner. Okay, I do that, and now you see what's happening. It uh, looks weird at first, but once I place the first pixel, which is going to be in the upper left corner, uh, what's happening is anything I draw pick a really bold color like black here, you'll see it's being done uh, across the board. So even though I can draw anywhere across this uh, now repeated three times this image, it's actually editing in all three places. So I can look for anything that looks like a scene and make it disappear. So there we go. Uh, super simple way, and I could have done the same thing if I wanted this if this were like a grass or dirt tile, it needs to also move uh, very cleanly up and down as well. I would have done the same thing. I would have made the image three times taller, and I would have, uh, you know, set the uh, the tile painting mode to represent the height of one one of the tiles. Um, so anyway, but this is just a really handy. I want to put a stronger shadow on the cloud here. Which I wouldn't want to do, but this is an example. Um, there you go, you can see how you just edit like you're drawing normally, but it's ensuring that there's absolutely no uh, strange mismatch or scene in your image. And then when you're done, all you have to do is frame, resize, and just go back to the original list. It, um, and, you know, it's a good idea to reposition it to the corner again, but go back to the original list, which is 80. And then turn off the grid mode, and once you save that, you know exactly how it's going to work. So, really handy for creating moving tiles and tests.